I don't know if you guys have heard of Michael Heiser, but uh, he seems to think that uh, the government has been making aliens up the entire time to hide what their real agenda is. So I'll just play you a clip from his little documentary that he made. My view, and this is the view that I take in the facade, is that Roswell was an Operation Paperclip screw-up. This was a program begun by our government during World War II. We knew we were going to win the war. The question became, what do we do with some of the, the people who are sort of at the forefront of technologies we're interested in, like the V-2 rocket? President Truman at the time did not want anyone from Nazi Germany or Japan who was involved in war crimes brought into our country, even if it was for an ostensibly good purpose. Let's tap their brains and, and, and get their technological knowledge. There were people, though, who disagreed with him. And so what they did along the chain of vetting people was if they got a really interesting candidate that they knew would be rejected because of a connection to like the death camps or something like that, they would put a paper clip on that person's file. And that was a signal to the next person down the line to pull that file, give that guy a new history, clean up his record, and then pass it on. Now, we got over 700 Nazi scientists into the country working for us in this project. Some of the most famous, Werner von Braun, who became number two at NASA, really responsible for a lot of our rocketry, a lot of our space program, and he also became Walt Disney's spokesperson for the Disney's World of Tomorrow. I remember seeing von Braun on TV. He was a Nazi. But again, nobody really knew the exact details of his history because they'd been deflected, erased, or, or manipulated. What I think happened is we got a number of these people over, especially the ones who sort of knew about exotic craft, you know, flight you know, modifications, how to build different craft. We know the Nazis were working on wingless aircraft, delta shapes, which if you go back to the early reports of quote-unquote flying saucers, the reports don't actually say that the craft looked like saucers. It says they were triangular delta craft that moved like saucers skipping across you know, water, that, like a stone or a saucer. The flying saucer term actually comes from a case uh, in the Northwest, where I'm at right now. Kenneth Arnold is the big case. He was flying a small plane, and while he was in the air, he saw a number of craft flying in formation. And he said that they moved like plates skipping across a flat surface or water. And he used the term saucer to describe, again, this sort of skipping motion. And out of that came the, the, the whole term flying saucer. But when he was asked to draw what he saw, he drew delta wing craft. He didn't draw a perfect circle you know, like we typically think of with flying saucers. Now we can look in hindsight and we know, again, some of the things that they were working on. We know the processes that they were using to do this. And these things show up in the Majestic documents. You know, he brought a lot of compelling evidence to show that um, the government is actually just making up all this alien stuff, you know, Project Blue Beam stuff, on purpose. So that way, uh, you know, they could hide what they're actually doing. And he goes into the, you know, further down he goes into project sunshine and all that you know we learned where the project paperclip got its name you know people putting they were putting paperclips on the nazi files who they wanted to be wiped clean so that way nobody knew so like von braun he's basically saying the government doesn't know if they're extraterrestrial life forms or not they're just using that as a guise for their uh, military failures and I guess this individual that was talking doesn't want people to confuse what they were talking about in Roswell as something that may be legitimate, like in his theory, is some kind of demon. You have said so.